السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وجماله وكماله وعظيم وجزيل نعمائه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف أنبيائه وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وأصحابه الصالحين الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم آمين uh, We continue إن شاء الله تعالى our journey through some of the questions uh, relating to uh, the ruh, uh, the human spirit, the human soul, uh, as we have been so far uh, mentioning and uh, the uh, major reference that I am using amongst others is the book of Imam ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, Kitab al-Ruh. And I hope you did not forget what we have covered so far about that concept of some very important uh, concepts and matters that some of which you might have known and some of which you might have not known for sure. So we continue in that regard, inshallah ta'ala, and uh, I hope you remember those two uh, actual uh, occurrences and stories uh, through the dreams of some of the Sahaba in their own time, those dreams having been seen by them about other companions who have passed away, and how those dreams, and especially those two dreams, the one pertaining to the two companions by the names of who remembers them, Sa'ad ibn Jathama and Awf ibn Malik al-Ansari rahimahumullahu ta'ala radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and what that taught us of the reality of life after death and also of the concepts of how arwah, how souls after death exist and we have an idea about that and how also they communicate with this world in ways very special, such as through those dreams. And the story also of the companion, another companion, in the time of Sayyiduna, the Khilafah of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and during the Battle of Al-Yamama, led by uh, Khalid ibn al-Walid, and one of those great companions, whom Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam prophesied that he will die as a shaheed, and indeed in that battle of Yamama he was killed and he came into a vision, into a dream of another companion and he told him, what did he tell him? Don't think first of all that this is just a dream and you're going to ignore it. He came to him and said to him, I am communicating to you a wasiya and he told him what happened what happened in the battlefield what happened when he was killed he told him in that dream to the other companion who was part of that battle he told him what who remembers yes he told him that my shield which was a very special shield apparently my shield was, when I was killed, was taken from me by another Muslim who lives in this place, at the very outskirts of the village. And he has a horse tied outside to a hebel, you know, to a rope, feeding. Then you go, you're going to find uh, a jar covering something. Upon that jar, there is the saddle under the jar, he hid my shield. Tell Khalid ibn al-Walid to recuperate it. 
and I have because that was in the battle. He was not perhaps expecting to die, rahimahullah ta'ala wa radiallahu ta'ala an. And he said, I have debts. Pay them, sell that shield and pay these debts and liberate slaves, X and Y and Z. And that communication was checked and it was like that. And Sayyiduna Khalid ibn Walid recuperated, in accordance with this text, recuperated that shield. And they informed Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq after this, he indeed executed the will of somebody who made a will when? After he died, through this spiritual connection. Al Imam, the great A'inma of our deen, of fiqh and of hadith, like Al Imam Al Hafiz ibn Abdul Barr, Rahimallah ta'ala, the great uh, hadith master and the great faqih and the great linguist and so on. He said, Rahimallah ta'ala, who also uh, related this uh, event and he said, uh, The only one we know of whose wasiyah, whose will, was executed after he died when he made that will in the time of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq and it is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq who ordered the execution of that will is and what was his name? The man? Thabit ibn Qais Ahsanti Sisters are doing better than the brothers as usual when it comes to remembering and learning but in practicing, uh, I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you really, this is my experience now after 61 years. Sisters, mashallah, in my experience for so far 30 years with them in teaching and in Kala, they are mashallah, they, they learn better than the brothers generally. They, they are more focused, they are even they express more spiritual meanings and concepts well, but in practicing, listen to me, and nasiha li wajhillah, nasiha as I gave nasiha to the brothers about their ilm, and they're not that good as the sisters, so they need to work on it. I tell my beloved sisters that on average, there are exceptions of course, when it comes to practicing, generally the brothers do better. Listen to that. هذه نصيحة خالصة سنسير نصيحة لوجه الله for both of us. The brothers need to be more serious to learn better and to you know, brush up their intelligence and their spiritual intelligence because the sisters do better here in my experience and the sisters have to learn and work more on actualizing what they know on actualizing what they know more than what they do. And there are, of course, exceptions in both groups. Exceptions in both groups. But this is the general rule, inshallah ta'ala. So, Jazakillah khair, sister, you did well. Thabat, you know, Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arba. And this is, these are very powerful occurrences that emphasize the reality of Hereafter, the life of the hereafter, and the barzakh. The next question he deals with, rahimahullah ta'ala, and again it, it has been answered in some way also, that do the arwah, plural of ruh, souls of the dead, with each other, do they convene in the barzakh, in the hereafter? Do they meet? Do they communicate? And of course, the answer is given in a lot of detail, and I'm going to summarize that for you. The answer is, yes, they do. Uh, and he mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, that in accordance to uh, the text and what we know, the arwah are of two kinds, especially after death. One kind of souls that are, well, billah, in torment and in adhab, of the kafirun, of the mushrikun, and so on and so forth. And another kind of souls of arwah are in bliss, and in prosperity, and in delight in that realm of the beyond. 
The first one, the first ones in a sense, they say they are too busy with their torment. And the souls of the Mu'minun who are in delight are the ones that have, in a sense, the leisure and the special uh, permissions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in communication with one another, with each other, and with this realm as well. So, that's why he says, Al arwahu qisman, arwahun mu'adhabah, wa arwahun mun'amah. Fal mu'adhabatu fi shughlin bima hiya fihi min al-adhab an al-tazawri wa al-talaqi. والأرواح المنعمة المرسلة غير المحبوسة تتلاقى وتتزاور وتتذاكر ما كان منها في الدنيا. Even the souls that communicate with one another in the beyond of those who are released and free and liberated and were believers, they even communicate with one another there and they enter into a sort, if we use our worldly, four-dimensional uh, language, they uh, remind one another, they talk to one another, talk to one another about what happened in this dunya, what, they used, to, what used to happen, etc. And also what is happening in dunya. As we mentioned, remember we mentioned, Last time, in those two previous sessions, what was very special that we learned through texts of the Sahaba and even texts of Rasulullah What did we learn about the souls of those of past way relating to their relatives and their peoples in this dunya? What have we learned? Zahid. They know about them. They know about what they are doing even in this dunya, our relatives, our loved ones who pass away before us, if they are mu'minun and so on, they know what we are doing here. And in some cases, depending on the arwah, they know details. What is the story that told us about details that the people who have passed away through their arwah know about dunya in details? Right. Which story taught us that? The story of? Yeah, the two men. True. Exactly. What were their names? Saab and Awf. And the story of Saab ibn Jathama and, and, uh, and Awf ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, both companions. That's what taught us even specifics. The death of the cat, the money in the in the in the cone in the in the, in, in the you know in the horn hanging in the middle of the room, the death of the daughter after six days, and of course also the story of Thabit ibn Qais, the details of where the shield was exactly, and that's how do they know that? Am I asking you the question? A for, a for? Spiritual connection. How did they get that spiritual connection? They're dead. They're dead. What's dead? Dead is the body. Died. And the ruh is released. And the one who made the body and the ruh together know in ways he created in this four-dimensional world. How do we know here? There are ways we know. How did we get them? That's Allah's creative will and creative acts the way we know in this dunya. After we die, in the realm of the barzakh, our arwah follow rules and laws that are consistent with that dimension. And they know in accordance to what Allah Azza wa Jal has willed and created of laws in those dimensions. It's that simple. He 
mentions the text, rahimahullah ta'ala, as one uh, of the evidence used to uh, make the point. For example, when Allah says in the Quran, uh, uh, in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Those of you who know the Arabic language, and you have, even if you have read the meanings of it, this ayah is saying that those who will obey Allah and obey His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, they will be, that is after they die, they will be in the company of, in the company of al nabiyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasula ulaika rafiqa. And what an excellent companionship that is. That is, when we die, the arwah are in the companionship of one another. They are in the ma'iyya ma'alladheena, in the ma'iyya of one another. So that this ayah indicates, and many other ayah, that that communication, that companionship, that existence, that spiritual, social, if I can borrow the word of, 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 of this dimension, that spiritual, social relationship occurs in the hereafter, as we learn from these ayat. So this is indeed an ayah that does make the point of the arwah in the hereafter communicating with one another, being in the company of one another. And what an a company, for example, if a mu'min dies and a real mu'min, a real mu'min, mashallah, even before the hereafter, before the, the resurrection day, that is in the comp company of the ruh is in the company of such arwah. So he mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, and this ma'iyyatul al-ma'iyya, wa hadhi al-ma'iyya, thabitatun. This companionship, ma'al ladhina an'ama Allahu alayhim, as Allah says, this ma'iyya, this companionship, this being with, after the soul, after we die, he says, ثابتة في الدنيا وفي دار البرزخ وفي دار الجزاء والمرء مع من أحب في هذه الدور الثلاثة. This ma'iyya, this companionship occurs and is real in this dunya, in the barzakh stage and after resurrection. Indeed, the arwah, our souls, in this dunya, they communicate with one another. Like souls, love like souls. Love one another. You know, the soul of a righteous will lean and love a soul of another righteous, even without their bodies knowing. Even if they have never met. Anybody met? Sayyiduna Abu Hanifa? Did you meet him? Did you meet Sayyiduna Malik? Or Sayyiduna Shafi'i? Or Sayyiduna Ahmad? Or Sufyan Thawri? Or no. no. But many have such an affinity, a love for them, without ever meeting them. That's perhaps sometimes because of the arwah. Somebody in this world you could have never met, you've heard of them. Something, something in your heart, spontaneous. And similar, similar, you know, like-minded as they say here, like-minded people get together. So like-hearted people get together. Like-spirited and soul-animated people love one another also. So, in this dunya, in the barzakh, in the hereafter, they are with one another. Rasulullah sallallahu indeed said, Al-mar'u ma'aman ahab. Everyone shall be in the company of the one whom he loves. 
she loves. Almaru ma'aman ahab. Those who in this dunya love whatever they love, they will be with them in the barzakh and in the hereafter. So be careful about whom you love and whom you hate. You hate someone, you will not be with them. So make sure whom you hate. If you hate, if you have to hate, you love, make sure whom you love. You love something, someone, you will be with them. In this dunya, soul-like will be together in the barzakh and after resurrection day. Al-mar'u ma'man ahab. Remember this hadith was mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu to a companion. You know the story? Probably you know it, but you didn't connect it. The story is this beautiful companion, not so well known. Now, he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi so much. So much hub love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That one day, suddenly he comes and sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa again. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you so much. That when I go home and I'm with my wife and children, and once I think of you, I cannot remain home. I have to look at you. So I come out to look at you. And I am, and then in this condition, I thought of myself when I die. If I enter Jannah, and when you die, and when you will be in the highest dimensions of Jannah and I will be even if I enter Jannah I cannot be with your level so I will not see you in Jannah and I can't stand that did you hear that? this is Hub Allah Akbar so he came to complain to Rasulullah about that and then Rasulullah didn't say anything later Come. And he recited to him the verse of the Quran I recited to you. وَمَنْ يُفِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصَّدِّقِينَ وَالشَّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسْنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا And in one other narration, he said, الْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبَّ Everyone shall be in the company of those whom he loves. Of the one you love have hub love for. So that's why uh, our arwah will be in that relationship in the hereafter depending on what type of hub love we had for what or for whom. You know. He mentions also Rahimahullah Ta'ala for example another ayah in the Quran where Allah says uh, um, which I think perhaps all of you know in which surah Ya ayyatuha nafsu al-mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki raviyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati which surah? Fajr this was a little bit quicker now <laughs> brothers were a little bit quicker in saying surah al-fajr so as I said, that's the general rule and there are exceptions. Inshallah. Give them a chance. In Surah Al-Fajr, Ya ayyatuhal nafsul mutma'inna Allah is addressing what here? The soul. When? When? When it is passing away. At death. This is what happens at death. When a person dies, is dying, then the soul is taken, and then if it is a good soul, a righteous soul, يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ ارْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً Return to your Lord, رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً Pleased and pleasing. فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي Enter ye now amongst my ibad. Fadhuli fi ibadi. 
Now this the soul hasn't died, the person has died, and the soul is addressed, enter amongst my servants. And enter my Jannah, my paradise. This year, the soul now is told, come to my Ibad. Be in the company of my Ibad like you in Jannah. That's what it is addressing. The soul leaving this body is addressed to be welcome among those who are already there, like it, like her or like him. And therefore, the arwah, two meet and are together, each in accordance to their nature. Remember, Allah just tells us in the Quran about the shuhada, huh? in Surah Al Imran. أين ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون أحياء لذن عند ربهم with their Lord سبحانه وتعالى in the presence of their Lord يرزقون so this indicates that they are there the شهداء are there together their أرواح are there together being together and therefore communicating with one another and living together as well يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ All of these ayat are very clear about this concept of the arwah, the souls communicating where they are with one another as it is well established. And then of course after that, after that point is made through many ayat of the Qur'an and hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as this text is, 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 is very um, filled with he begins to tell us what? Mara'i uh, visions and dreams related by those who actually so those dreams most of whom are great scholars men and women and regular peoples as well and as you know after the evidence, the textual evidence and so on, when there is such textual evidence, the mara'i or the ru'a, the uh, dreams of the mu'minun are very, to be taken very seriously. Because Rasulullah indicated that. What was an example or two in which Rasulullah indicated to take dreams seriously? About Laylatul Qadr Hasanti. But remember, Laylatul Qadr, when he وسلم, many came to him and expressed that they saw dreams that it was on the night of the 27th. So he took that وسلم, and mentioned, And he took that, he says, I see that your dreams have uh, uh, together have altogether indicated that it would be on this night. And the dreams that he used to mention, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the dreams that are told to us in the Quran about those who have seen dreams. Example, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, and his dreams, and so on. And the dreams of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he related to his companions. So there are Anybody who says dreams don't count, that's a very, that's very fallacious argument. That's it's a fallacy. It's, it's very wrong, no matter who says it or who writes it. What do you do with the text of the Quran? What do you do with the hadith of Rasulullah about relating dreams and taking dreams seriously? Well, to take dreams not seriously at all is wrong. Or to say dreams are everything, that's another you know, extreme attitude. But to take them within the context, alhamdulillah, within the context of what Allah says and what Rasulullah says, etc., that is absolutely proper, not only proper, that's part of our deen as well. Um, and some of which we have, we have recounted. 
as well. So he mentioned one of the few, few I'm going to mention some of them, inshallah. I mean, you all know Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak? Yes? Anybody here? Anybody knows Descartes? Mr. Descartes? Raise your hands. Who doesn't know Descartes? Raise your hands. Oh, there are people who don't know Descartes. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> okay. Who doesn't know Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak? Raise your hands. As many or more people. Now, who, knows, uh, who knows Einstein? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Right. Do you don't know Einstein? You raise your hands. I really want to see something. Everybody. Who knows Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak? One. Shame on us too. You know Albert Einstein? That's fine. But you don't know Abdullah ibn Mubarak. That's what we are. That's what we have become. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Mubarak is again a great alim, a great zahid, a great faqih, a great hafiz. Was a student and a companion also of the likes of Sayyiduna Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, and was one of the great minds and beautiful souls. So, if you know Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, alhamdulillah, everybody knows Abu Hanifa, I'm sure, that's great, but I'm just doing this to, you know, to incite you and me to know better, to know more about our heritage. Abdullah Mubarak is very famous, rahimahullah ta'ala, as an alim, as a scholar, as a muhaddith, as a hafiz of, of hadith, as a faqih, and a zahid, and so on. And, and he was a great scholar. In his time. And um, of course, you know Sufyan al Thawri. I know some people probably don't. Sufyan al Thawri, Abdullah Mubarak, Sufyan al Uyayna. These are great names, Imam Malik. You know, these are great names, which, of course, unfortunately, we have not learned to know them as we know our other names. These are great minds and great souls. So Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mubarak is related to say, I have seen Sufyan al Thawri in my dream. These are, they, they were um, contemporaries. And I told him, look when they see, what type of dreams they see, as I always remind myself. And, and, and in the dreams, what we see in the dreams and what we say and do in the dreams in one way tells us a lot about what? About ourselves. SubhanAllah. So he sees Sufyan al-Thawri in the dream, his, his contemporary and his colleague. And he asks him the question. This tells you the, the, the nature of soul this person has. And now this is the soul exhibiting its reality. Because when you sleep, you're not in control of, of what you see. It comes the way you are. So in this dream, the soul is free and the soul exhibits its own characteristics, in a sense. So, the communication of the two souls is this. One says to the other, Sayyiduna Abdullah Mubarak's Ruh says to Sayyiduna Sufyan al Thawri, Ma fa'ala Allahu bik? What did Allah do with you? See that? What did Allah do with you? The soul answers the other one. In this case, says, He said to him, Laqaytu Muhammadan wa hizbah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was in the company, I met finally Muhammad وسلم, and his party and his companions. Many of the examples, I'm going to pick only a few of them, inshallah. 
He says here, Rahimallah Ta'ala, through the Senate of, of the scholar Ibn Abi Dunya, whom we introduced a few, a few sessions ago, Rahimallah Ta'ala, the great scholar with the great uh, collection of a hadith pertaining to the hereafter and to the dreams, Kitab al Manamat, Ibn Abi Dunya, who lived in the third century Hijrah, Rahimallah Ta'ala. He says uh, in, in this Senate, uh, when Bishr ibn al Bara ibn Ma'rur, when he passed away, and this is in the companion's time, in the Rasulullah's time, his mother, Umm Bishr, wajadat alayhi wajdan shadeedah. She was so sorrowful, so hurt his mother, so in pain, when her son Bishr, this great son of a, of a companion, and so on, passed away. She came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said in accordance with what this text says, Ya Rasulullah, there are many, it seems from my tribe, Banu Salama, who, who die from time to time, Allah. She asked the question, فَهَلْ تَتَعَارَفُ الْمَوْتَى Do the dead ones know one another? Do they meet one another? He replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because she asked the question and she said, why she asked the question? So that I send through those who are dying amongst us from time to time, I can send them my salam to my son. If they can convey my salam to my son. SubhanAllah. He replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam in accordance to this text here. Na'am wa alladhi nafsi biyadi. Yes, by the one in whose hands my soul lies. Ya umma bishr. Innahum la ta'arafuna. Indeed, they do know and communicate with one another. Kama ta'arafu al-tayru fi ru'usi shajar. He gave her a parable like birds know one another on top of trees. And then after that, whenever one of her tribe, Banu Salama, is dying, she goes to him, Umm Bishr, and says, Salamu alaykum ya fulan. He says, Wa alaykum salam ya Umm Bishr. So in general, she would say to him, please convey my salam to my son. Aqar ala Bishrin min salam. And in accordance with this text, Aqarraha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Aina. In another narration that he mentions, and this is the last one I'm going to mention. There are many of them, as I said, it is by Tawatur. The number is so, you're not so, so, so large that it reaches the level of what we call it Hadith terminology, Tawatur. And when there is a report by Tawatur, it conveys certitude. There is no doubt about it that it has occurred. You know, hadith mutawatir versus hadith ahad. Tawatir is the top most quality of authenticity of hadith or of report. Amen. So these manamat have been so much that they convey the meanings of what the ulama has conveyed. They conveyed that meaning of communication of arwah by tawatir. So, one of the ulama mentions, Masma ibn Asim, قال رأيت عاصما للجحدري في منامي. I saw this other great man, great scholar, Asim al-Jahdari, in my manam, in my dream, in my sleep, after two years of his death. And then when I saw, now this is the dream, this is in a dream, the soul are meeting and it's like, 
it's real. So he says to him, Alisa Admut, didn't you die? Because it's a dream. It's not like he's making it up. It's like, oh, you're here. Didn't you die? He says, Bala, of course I died. He says, I said to him, where are you? He says, Ana wallahi fi rawdatin min riyadi al-jannah. I am in one of the meadows or the gardens of the gardens of paradise of Jannah. And I wa nafarun min ashabi. I and a group of my colleagues, of my brothers, of my companions. We meet every Jumu'ah night, every night of Jumu'ah, that is Thursday night in our reckoning. We meet every night of Jumu'ah and the morning of it as well. We meet in the majlis of this great scholar, great person known, Bakr ibn Abdullah al-Muzani. فَنَتَلَقَّى أَخْبَارَكُمْ And we speak about your news. And we receive your news. He said, I said, and this is in the dream, قُلْتُ أَجْسَامَكُمْ أَجْسَامُكُمْ أَمْ أَرْوَاحُكُمْ your, you meet me, he said. I said, your bodies or your souls? He said, Hayhata baliyat al ajsam. He says, Hayhat, oh, it's, the bodies have disintegrated, have, have spoiled, have. Wa innama tatalaq al arwah. He says, our souls meet, our arwah meet. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Allah يَتَوَفَّ الْأَنفُسَ حِينَ مَوْتِهَا وَالَّتِي لَمْ تَمُتْ فِي مَنَامِهَا فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ In which surah is this? Az-Zumar. Ahsant. Surah Az-Zumar. Beautiful ayah. Again, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is related to have said of the interpretations of this ayah Allahu yatawaffa al-anfus hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha that Allah is speaking about the souls of people who go to sleep Allah takes their souls Allah takes their souls in a way not as he takes that is the souls of those who are who die that's why when we sleep it is said this is minor death sleep is minor death and Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the experience of sleep for many 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 reasons that we need that to rest and so on and so forth but most importantly for those who reflect and ponder to give us a glimpse of what of death and to give us a glimpse of al barzakh Life in Al-Barzakh, for those who ponder, may Allah make us of them. So Allah takes us their souls, and then He releases the one that is meant to live, and the one upon which He decreed death, He, he keeps subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we sleep, souls, meet. Even the souls of the living in some ways. That's why you are sleeping and you see in a dream somebody else living also and there is communication sometimes and exact things happen. So in this ayah, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, in one of the ta'wilat, in one of the interpretations of this ayah is this. And this contributes to the fact the arwah do encounter one another. <clears throat> he mentions a text where it is related through the great tabi'i, great tabi'i scholar Sa'id ibn Musayyib, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he said, Iltaqa, Abdullah, listen to this, this is, this is very strange. 
strange in the sense we're not used to it. But after we have been saying so far for this is the third week that we're doing this, I think these uh, should start to become um, acceptable to us and casual to us in view of the texts that we have mentioned and the ulama's words that we have mentioned. Now, he said, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Salam, who is Abdullah ibn Salam? Yes, Sahabi, indeed. What was special about him? He was, he was a Jewish rabbi. And he embraced Islam in the time of when Rasulullah migrated to Medina. And he was expecting something like that. And when he saw him and saw some signs and asked some questions, he immediately embraced Islam and gave up the rabbinic uh, position that the powerful rabbinic position that he had and followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and became one of the greatest companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Salam and they and Salman Sayyiduna Salman al-Farisi who does not know Salman al-Farisi now of course that I would say everyone knows Sayyiduna Salman al-Farisi Another great companion who used to be what? From where? From Persia. He used to, his parents and his family used to worship what? Fire. And they were from an aristocratic fire worshiper family. And then Allah Azza wa Jal guided his hearts and even made him move from land to land until he got to Medina as a slave even. And look how Allah Azza wa Jal attracts to his north through strange ways. Who would have expected that or accepted that? But what, look what Allah was doing to him. Even through that, through slavehood, as a slave, and he accepted all of that. He didn't know what his future was. But that future was to bring him to Rasulullah And to give him the gift of Islam and the gift of becoming one of the greatest companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to be of the dwellers of Jannah radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. Now they met Salman, Sayyiduna Salman, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Salam. And you know, they were in, in, that is, when they were living, in one of their discussions, and they were, they were very serious, special human beings. One said to the other, and this is what you're going to hear the length of the fuqaha because of what they have known from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the uh, acts of our predecessors, of our Salaf. Such statements have become acceptable to the fuqaha. What are these statements? If you die before me, come to me. And inform me about what has happened to you with your Lord. These are souls. You know, why do we find this very strange? Because we are bodies. We live in this dunya as kathif being. We are so dense. We're not latif. We're not, you know, we are not spiritually sensitive and refined. We are kafif, we are dense. We are not refined spiritually. So we don't have these experiences. This is beyond the beyond us. We have gotten used so much to the materialistic dimensions of this world that some of us lost categorically and totally our spiritual dimension and sense. And some of us, some of that. And some of us, 50%. Some of us, 30%, etc. But look at these people. You know. um, he says, come to me and inform me. This is perhaps also some of the ulama talk about this later. This is another kind of tasarruf. In other words, the ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants some of his ibad to operate in the world, in creation, in the different dimensions. He gives them 
the power, the ability, the will, the permission to function in certain special ways in his kingdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala, through their souls. And here, this is granted to people like that, it seems. And he says, and if I die before you, I shall come and meet you, and I'll come to you in a dream. The other one said, Well, تَلْتَقِ الْأَمْوَاتُ وَالْأَحْيَا Do the dead and the living meet? He says, yes, they are souls. In Jannah, they are allowed to move wherever they want. And then, one of them died and came indeed to the other one in a dream. In accordance to this report. And he told him this, one of many things. Tawakkal وَأَبْشِرْ فَلَمْ أَرَ مِثْلَ التَّوَكُّ لِقَطْ He communicated to him an advice, a counsel, a word of wisdom. Trust Allah Sawjil. Rely on Allah Sawjil. And أَبْشِرْ In other words, everything will be beautiful. Only beautiful things will happen. Only good things will happen. If you have tawakkul. For he says, now that he's in that world, he does not see anything as valuable as tawakkul. Reliance on Allah Azzawajal fully and unequivocally. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. You know, as I said, in another instance, even uh, he mentions uh, this is of later people in the Tabi'in or Tabi'i Tabi'in era when one of them was dying, Shurayh ibn Abid al Thimali, when he was dying, uh, came to visit him, Ubayf ibn al Harith, and he told him as he was dying, he told him the same thing that those two companions said. To one another, Ya Abel Hajjaj, in Adirta Allah, and Tatina Badel Motifa to Hubirana Bima Tara Fafal. If you are able to come to us after you die and inform us about what you experience, please do. And, and the author here says, Wakanat Kalimatan Makbulatan fi Ahli Fiqa. The author, the scholar, he says, This statement was a statement that was approved of amongst the scholars of Fiqh. That it was within, in other words, the context of our aqidah, and it was proper, it was not something strange or unusual. And then indeed, he saw him after a while in a dream. Amen. One young girl, the daughter of uh, someone, rahimahullah, she died in an epidemic that uh, ran through their town or their village and their land. Her father saw her in a dream after she passed away, rahimahullah. And he loved her very much. And in the dream, these two souls are meeting. He says to her in the dream, Ya Bunaya, Akhbirini an il akhira. Oh my daughter, tell me about akhira. Why do people nowadays not as often see these things? What do you think the reason is? Dense. And when we're dense, gravity is strong. Gravity is strong. We stay on earth. We're not, we're not latif, we're not arwah. So that our arwah can defy gravity. 
and go in the beyond and experience the beyond. And dense meaning we have become too materialistic. Our concerns, our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, our drives, our hopes, our concerns, our feuds are mostly about what? Material things. This world, this dunya, here. So we are pulled, pulled. And we have become dense and we are pulled by the gravitational pull of our shahawat and our dunya. We're not allowed to roam freely because we're not latif enough. We're not subtle, we're not sensitive, we're not spirit, you all spiritual enough. So we don't have access to that dimension as they seem to have done. There are still people like that nowadays, but not in any sense like those before us a long time ago, long time. Subhanallah, he says to her, She replies, Ya Abati, O my beloved father, we have come upon momentous matters. And we are here, we know, but we cannot do. And you over there, you can do, but you don't know what we know. And she says to him in that dream, Wallahi, by Allah, لَتَسْبِيحَةٌ أَوْ تَسْبِيحَةً Wallahi, one subhanallah, or two subhanallah, أو ركعة أو ركعتان, or even one ركعة, or two ركعات. In the scroll of my deeds, it is in the records of my deeds, now I know, is more beloved to me than all of the dunya. That's from someone who was there, communicating with someone who is here by the grace of Allah by the bounty of Allah, by the rahmah of Allah for this ummah. Yes, there are people who come back from death in this sense to tell us by the grace of Allah what has been. And these are mutawatir reports. Reports that are not one or two or hundred. hundred is enough. There are thousands of them. Throughout the centuries and throughout the ages, where by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, these reports still exist to grant us his rahmah so that we pay heed, so that we learn and we rectify our conditions, my dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah ta'ala, we stop here for the moment and if Allah wills, we will meet again inshallah ta'ala and um, we will continue with some of our as of the same and similar aspects of the realities of the arwah. In the meanwhile, inshallah ta'ala, just to remind you, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, this Saturday we're having a seminar. This seminar, because I used to offer seminars like this elsewhere before I came and joined you in this community. And we used to offer them for the past many, many, many years. And sometimes the seminars are two or three days and they are well attended. Uh, in this community, Allah Ta'ala knows I'm learning more. And we're going to do the second seminar as well, inshallah Ta'ala, this Saturday, which is relatively not very long, because it's only one day. And that is from 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock, or basically almost Maghrib time, where we're going to learn together very seriously, inshallah Ta'ala, for those of us who want to, we learn very seriously about matters that have to do with our lives in this world and in the hereafter. You know that we are trying to cover the spectrum of Islamic disciplines gradually, from the spiritual to the rational, from the rawhani to the fiqhi, and in between. We cover that 
through the khutab of al-Jum'ah, through the khawatir of the evenings, through the classes like Tuesdays for the sisters and the brothers, and for the seminars that we're trying also here to, um, to emancipate. So this time we're going to speak about mainly uh, and briefly the concept of the differences amongst the scholars which we addressed in the last seminar, but briefly in the context of speaking about the fiqh and the usul and the principles governing the concepts of bid'ah and sunnah. And what our, uh, our repertoire of ilm, of scholarship has gathered for us. I shall be sharing much of that insha'Allah ta'ala from the Quran, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah the analysis of that, the, the methodology of analysis, and what our ulama rahimahullah ta'ala have said about those issues. And we'll treat some of those issues and see how they fall in which category of bid'ah or sunnah and why. And because this subject has been, been mentioned by many people, especially nowadays some young people, especially in the last many few decades, the subject has been mentioned a lot and this word has been used a lot. What is right about it and what is wrong about it in accordance to Islamic scholarship throughout the centuries that we shall address inshallah ta'ala and, uh, and, uh, and learn about. So I hope that especially all of you, that generally all of you, and especially those who are truly in some ways interested in ilm, interested in Islamic ilm, in knowledge, such as the knowledge we have been sharing from here. Now this is knowledge more about the fiqhi, the usuli, the rational aspects of the deen pertaining to these questions. Those also, especially students of ilm, I think it would be, inshallah ta'ala, very instructive uh, for them to, to attend ta'ala and to inform others to do the same, inshallah ta'ala, because when we are ill-equipped in the scholarly sense, whether we are PhDs or we are um, you know, high school dropouts, if we don't have this type of information in our deen, we shall say the wrong things and do the wrong things when we think we're doing the right things. That we need to know. You know, my beloved brothers and sisters, knowledge empowers. Knowledge empowers. Ignorance is not bliss. Those of us who know little and think we know a lot are sometimes more dangerous than those who don't know at all and know they don't know. One of the great ulama and salihun said, there are four kinds of people. And I'm going to close with this. There are four kinds of people. Rajulun la yadri wa yadri annahu la yadri. Fadalika mustarshidun fa arshiduh. A person, there are four kinds of people. Kinds of person. Persons. One person who does not know and knows that he does not know. That's a seeker. Help him. وَرَجُلٌ لَا يَدْرِي وَلَا يَدْرِي أَنَّهُ لَا يَدْرِي فَذَلِكَ جَاهِلٌ فَرْفُضُوهُ And a person who does not know and does not know that he does not know. That's a fool. Reject him. وَرَجُلٌ يَدْرِي وَلَا يَدْرِي أَنَّهُ يَدْرِي فَذَلِكَ نَائِمٌ فَأَيْقِذُوهُ And a person who knows but does not know that he knows. That's a dreamer. Wake him up. وَرَجُلٌ يَدْرِي وَيَدْرِي أَنَّهُ يَدْرِي فَذَلِكَ عَالِمٌ فَاتَّبِعُوهُ And one who knows and knows that he knows, not thinks he knows. Knows that he knows. That's a knower. Follow him. May Allah Azawajal help us be at least of the one who does not know as that he does not know. Not one who does not know 
and does not know that he does not know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa